music. How are you enjoying the tour? Yeah, it's been a nice tour so far. Mm. It's been really good. How much machinery is needed these days to get the stones on the road? How many people now are involved in this? Um, well, since about sort of '69, we've we've had quite a large crew. The, the crew is sort of smaller in Europe because, you know, just from an economic thing. That I mean, we don't have the money to spend, you know, on the production that we do in America. We try and do the same production with less people, and but one of the things is to get set up. Uh, Europe, there's a lot of problems because of the, just going from one country to the next. So, and everything's done by road, and you can always get stuck to the customs, the trucks, you know, with all the equipment and get held up. So, we've learned not to play back to back, which means every day we have a day in between because, uh, you know, whatever happens. But I guess there's about uh, 25 people that aren't musicians. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you've been touring now for a long time, haven't you? Yeah. Do you still get the motivation to get out and go on the road? Well, yeah, the mo I mean, the motivation's still there. <laughs> and I, I wouldn't be out here. Uh, I mean, I just like doing it. I mean, the simple answer to that is, you do, and that's what I do, you know, so mm. if I don't do that, and you know, I don't do anything. You know, it's a great part of what I want to do, which is sing. Live, you know, so mm. this is what we do, and that's what I do. That's why we tour. Because you did a lot of recording on the last American tour, I think, didn't you? Yeah. For a projected album, which in fact was never released, with Stevie Wonder. Yeah, we had some really nice things. Um, well, it's the great old uh, enemy, you know, the record company. You know? Well, our old record company, Decca, and uh, our old manager, Alan Klein, they didn't want the live album to come out because they had certain rights on re-recording of material that's already been out, you know, i.e. another version of You Can't Just Get What You Want. Mm. And um, there's only ever been one, and we happen to do that on stage, and I like it, and they won't let us put it out. Uh, I mean, and we offer them money and everything, I mean, percentage per track and all this stuff. But they don't want it out. And I, it's a drag, you know, that you can't just record what you want if it's old or new, and then put it out, you know. Mm. I don't like this kind of restrictions. It's a very dog in the manger attitude, Decker and Alan Klein. How long is that restriction going to keep that still? Oh, a uh, long time, unless they sort of um, see the light, you know. And, um, I mean, it's <laughs> not, I mean they, everyone has something to, to sort of gain, you know. Yeah. Well, we have to gain because we want to put the record out because we like it. They have to gain because they can earn money from it. But no, no. I don't understand them. I don't claim to understand their attitudes. Because in terms of recording, the, the bands always stay together for recording purposes. None of you have gone off and done solo albums, say, in the way that the people in The Who are doing now. Have you, have you felt that you wanted to go off and do a solo Yeah, I've, album? I've, uh, we've all wanted to, but we've all been so lazy. And that, um, we've never <laughs> done it. You know, I'm really lazy. And um, you've got this sort of problem, though. Um, I mean, if, unless you're really, really prolific, uh, as a writer, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd feel that if I did an album on my own, what would I hold back? What would I choose, you know, to mm. put on the Stones album? And the same with Keith. Which ones would we, you know, you get to this position of holding back songs? And uh, it's difficult, but I, th I still think, I mean, I, we could, I'd like to do an album on my own. I think Keith could do a nice album on his own. Mm. Mm. There's a theory, you know, that we were spe speaking about a bit earlier on, Mick, about. Uh, the idea that I've read quite a lot in the press that like people were into the Stones in 1963 and the people who are into the band then have kind of grown with the Stones and not necessarily been replaced by sort of younger people getting into the band a little bit later on. I mean, do you think that theory is a true theory? Um, well, not really. I mean, we, we can talk about like, England or the whole world, I suppose. I mean, I know that in certain places uh, there is a new audience because we've never played there before. I mean, there's lots of towns on this tour we've never played. But I think in England, a lot, a lot of the people that come to see the band, I don't know if they've seen them before, but they certainly weren't around ten years ago. And was, they were four years old, some of them then. So, I mean, <laughs> so maybe they did come, babes in arms, you know, I don't know. Uh, I, th I think uh, if you continue touring, um, hopefully you get a renewed audience you keep some or 
a large part of your old audience, but you also pick up new ones along the way that have never seen you before. Mm. And I think, uh, I think this band's done that reasonably well. Your audience is very, very much from country to country, particularly, say, comparisons between America and Britain. Yeah, and they're truly different. Mm. But, I mean, uh, they're very unpredictable. I mean, the, the audience in London this time was, like, out there. We did three shows. Some of them were... The first one was really quiet, which was the one that was all reviewed. It was really a quiet audience, but the, the last one was really not at all. It was completely different. And... Um, Birmingham, where I think you were there. Mm. Uh, the first show was uh, undeniably quiet. <laughs> least. I, they, I mean, we, we, you know, they had a good time. We, we sort of just played, you know, rather than um, sort of tried to sort of rip it to bits, kind of thing. But the next audience was totally different. I suppose you were at the second. I was show, at the second, and they were very up. Yeah, you know, really, really up, and really young. Was the first ones were really quite staid. God bless them, I mean, I don't mind. <laughs> well, you can't choose your audience, I tell you. That's one thing you can't do. You never have to take the audience that comes and pays and be grateful that you get them. Yeah. Because you recorded a lot of Goat's Head in L.A., didn't you? No, no, it was all done in Jamaica. It was all done in Jamaica. Yeah. Didn't you do some mixing in L.A.? No. No, it was all done in Jamaica. I did vocals uh, about different places, you know, but most of it was all done in Jamaica. Mm. Because I was going to lead in with that, you see, to talk about the music situation. Yeah. Because, uh, I mean, what, how does the energy level in the music situation in LA compare with, say, London as a centre? Well, I mean, I think, I think they're both sort of uh, great centres of music, really, of rock music. Um, LA, LA's got higher, and if you want to talk about energy, I think it's probably got a higher energy level. But a lot of great things have come out of both towns. But uh, they, they're very enthusiastic in LA in the audience. Yeah. But um, I don't know, they stand uh, to be jaded, I think. You know, they're very jaded, actually. <laughs> you've really got to, you know, you've got to be out, totally outrageous, you know. Mm. Um, London's got a very bad reputation though, with bands, you know, as a, as a sort of quiet, difficult place to play. But I haven't really enjoyed it this time, I must say. Mm. Talk about Angie a little bit, Mick, because, I, again, I read in one of the musics about three or four weeks ago that, in fact, Angie was written quite a long time ago. Now, is that true? Mm, I mean, no. I, I read that it was written in 64 or 65. Oh, no, 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 no. It wasn't, no, it was just, I didn't, I never read that. No, it was written in, uh, what, last, on the last American tour. Well, I mean, we, we didn't finish it until this year. Mm. But we wrote the melody, well, Keith wrote the melody, and, and the Angie, and I wrote the other bit, which is... <laughs> <laughs> and that was on that particular one. Um, no, it was a new song. It's an unusual choice for a single, really, too, isn't it? Yeah, well, I thought, you know, with, uh, I didn't really pick it, you know, to be quite honest. It wasn't my sort of pick, because <laughs> I picked Tumbling Dice to be a single, and nobody really didn't do that well. So um, everyone said, oh, Angie, I think that's a single, you yeah. know. So I said, well, I don't know. Guy really liked dancing, Mr. D. Mm, yeah. Which you're going to see later. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I really like that one. But uh, I thought, no, I'm not going to sort of uh, put my foot down and say this is a single. And uh, most everyone said that I thought it would. So, so uh, I think a ballad, you know, once every sort of four years is all right. <laughs> it makes a change. Yeah. <laughs> and let's talk about Crackers a little bit, Mick, because I, I, I know very little about the way the band came to be signed to the label. Who actually saw them first? Well, uh, Jimmy Miller was producing them and uh, they had already had a single out and uh, that had done well in America, quite well for a first single. And um, you know, they said, well, would you like them for the rest of the world, you know, and uh, apart from America. So we said, yeah, that's a really quite a good band. They write nice songs. And I, I like the single they got. It's really mm. nice. Mm. There's an album on the way too. Yeah, there's an album should be out very soon. It's all done, and uh, that's the album I heard when we were in Jamaica. And I thought they were really a good band, you know. So I thought, wow, I'm I'm tired of not signing bands, you know. Just just, just see what happens, you know. Yeah. Just finally, Mick, again, going back to something that I read not too long ago in the musics. There's a lot of talk about this being the last tour that the Stones are going to do. Is that true? Wishful thinking, I mean. Sure. <laughs> Wishful thinking on that journalist's part. 
No, I mean, I don't really, uh, I don't know, no. otherwise I wouldn't have made an announcement from the stage at Wembley or something. Um, uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think we've uh, got a few more to go, yeah. Mick Jagger, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you.